Hey, hey, everybody. Good morning. I'll give a few minutes for people to get the notification. Morning, Garden State Gardener. How you doing today? Running a little late, but I said I'm going to go live because I missed last week. So I'm just going to touch base with everybody. Morning, Joe Vacu. Morning, Laura's Garden. I'm just popping in. I say that every time and then it's on for two hours. Morning, Willie. And see what's going on. Tell you what's going on over here. Some foolishness was going on in the streets. Some things funny, some things not so funny. Um, morning, Hudson. And I'll catch you up. I'll give a few moments for people to kind of get the uh, notification. I was on the road, so I didn't put it up early. Um, I never do because I don't know what's going to happen. Sometimes on Saturdays, I went to the feed store this morning to get it over with. Because in two weeks, it's Easter. Some things are going on this week. I don't want to be, you know, not getting what I need. Plus, it's raining cats and dogs. And the chicken run is muddy and disgusting. So anybody who has animals, you know, you need what you need to keep everything clean and dry. And um, these chickens like to dig tunnels, it seems like. But I'll fill you. I'll mm -hmm. fill you in on all the different stuff. Okay, five of you is here, so we, we'll start. Good number is five. So, yeah, it's been raining cats and dogs here. I, I solved the one problem with the leakage in the chicken run. I changed the tarp. So I think the tarp was, was sun bleached and old, so it was leaking. And I'll be drinking my smoothie. I have a bit of smoothie left. Like I need to have some food. It's my breakfast. Um, so that part it was, but it was soaking wet until I figured it out. It, like literally a flood. Yesterday, it rained again. So it's like, you know, two days, no rain, one day rain. So it dries out a bit and then it gets soggy. The girls dug every corner looking for worms. It was like a muddy mess. I threw pine pellets in there. Some pine shavings went back inside to do my work. And... I come back and it's mud and they're looking at me guilty. Like, how did that happen? Okay. Heffa, we know how this happened. They dug up the corners morning. Teagsy. They dug up the corners a muddy mess. The pine pellets didn't have time to expand. They just kicked them all out and it was a hot mess morning lashes. So I had to, um, you know, put pine shavings down. I've never done that before. It didn't work. The straw is really the best thing. I don't know why I went around and did something different. It didn't make no sense. Just a hot mess. That means the eggs are dirty because their feet are dirty and it's a whole yuck. Also, <laughs> I found a tunnel. The rat, I went in there one day this week. I can't remember what day. Later than usual to lock them up. I don't leave food in the run anymore. I've never in a while. I dump it back in a bucket, seal it, and I hang the feeder high up on the uh, run. This morning when I got out there, there was two pieces of doo-doo in there. Big ones. Well, it's not a mouse. It's the rat. Even though I I sprinkled hot pepper all around the place. But because it's raining, it's washing away. They built a tunnel. I have pavers all around the run. The pavers are about 10 inches, you know, away from the run, like deep or width or whatever you want to call it. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller, but the minimum is about 10 inches. It dug a tunnel underneath the stones to the run. So I filled that with hot sauce and pepper. It's coming in at night to get the food, but I don't leave food, but it goes and gets like whatever crumb and debris. It's disgusting because that's going to bring germs to the chickens and it's just doo-dooing in the feeder. Like any animal that, well, the chickens do the same thing, that doo-doo where they eat, it's not a clean animal. Anyways, a mouse was in there the other morning. I had to shoo the mouse away. Same problem. So you have to be really mindful. Do not leave food out. So sometimes if I'm leaving at a certain time, like 5.30ish to go out and do stuff, I'll put the food away and they have to just scratch it on the ground and just figure it out. Because if you leave food out, it's going to be a problem. I went out one night, maybe it was a Wednesday night, into the run to put the food away. I heard like a big shuffling. When I ran around the back of the run to the flower garden part, I saw this body moving. It was the rat. And my light was catching it. So, yeah. 
what else happened with the chickens this week? I got, I've been getting four eggs occasionally, but usually two and three. I had a staff meeting with the chickens and told them that the hot oil and skillet is waiting for them if they don't start pulling their weight. So I think Biscuit, you know, got into gear. So I'm getting four eggs. Cookie, who's the fattest one, isn't doing nothing. Nothing. Then my lawn was dug up by either a skunk or a, a raccoon. I, when I say dug up, I mean dug up. They don't want me to have grass. They don't want me to have grass. Let me just drop the link before I forget. And um, like literal holes that will have to be filled with dirt before I can even put seed down. So one day I went outside. I took a break because I work from home. So I went and took a break, went outside. And I have a big tub of red pepper flakes, red chili flakes. I said, okay, I'm going to sprinkle some on the lawn to turn them off. No problem. I put a mask on. I put on the mask, you know, just in case, because I know when I'm mixing it with the food, the chicken feed, I start to sneeze and I'll kind of say, so you know what, make sure I'm protected. I'm going to sprinkle the, the, um, the red chili flake on the, on the grass, on the lawn. I don't know if I have scrubs. There ain't no grub. They ain't, they ain't a damn grub. There's no grub. My lawn is dead. It's useless. Nothing's there. Not even grass can barely grow. So I don't think, but they just, they're just bad mind. Miss Sprinkle the red chili flake on the, on the lawn. I guess there was a slight breeze because the, the, the breeze blows. It's okay. I have a mask on. I'm good. Miss keep a turn away so that the wind is, you know, not going to blow at me. When me look, my eyes are running. They're burning. I can't see. I'm like, my eyes, my eyes, they're burning. No. <laughs> Tears running down. Can't I see. Then my phone started ring. And I was getting private calls all morning. Good morning, Rooster. I was getting private calls all morning. So I'm like, I can't answer the phone. So I'm like, blinking. I can't answer my phone. My look, I can't. Who's calling me? So then I saw my sister's face. I'm like, okay, it's she. I said, my eyes, my, no, hello, no, my eyes, my eyes. I've been burning. She said, what's going on? I said, I was sprinkling pepper on the lawn because I dig up my lawn and out to my eye. She's like, oh my God. She's like, go, she goes, go wash it out. What are you doing? So I went into the garage because I have a, I was, it was already open. I have a bucket of rainwater in there. And I took the water, rainwater, I washed my eyes. I'm like, oh my God, this water is dirty. What if there's bacteria in there? She went, She's like, girl. This has gone to, I said, I can't see. And I have one eye, then I have the other eye. And as soon as you blink one eye, it burns more. So you got to blink the other eye. Burning, burning, burning. I had to run inside and close the garage. Put the stuff awake. I can't leave it open. Run into the bathroom. Wash my hand because now I was, you know, dealing with stuff. So I don't put pepper back in my eye. And wash my face. And I was crying for about 30 minutes. Burning, burnt. Then I said, I don't know whose idea it was. To, to say that if you're in a problem, to use pepper spray. I know firsthand, never, if somebody's attacking you, pepper spray and bear spray is the last thing you need. Last thing you need. Because the way how my face was burning off, my face nearly burned off. And then five hours later, I put some hot sauce on something that I was eating. My eyes started burning again. It was just like it was already sensitive. Do not use pepper spray ever in this life if you even feel a little breeze blowing don't use it not a good plan odd last week now saturday saturday i was i had to go inspect the property because um they gave us notice and they're moving out march 30th so they gave us notice i guess beginning of february because you have to do 60 days notice. Morning, I'm G Mama. So I wanted to see the place before them leave, how the place is being kept. Long and short is, is that it, the place isn't damaged. I don't see any damage to the place per se. It's just that she lived very chucka chucka, very nasty, cluttery, cat hair and dander everywhere, even behind the, the side of the stove on the ground. There's like clumps of, of um cat fur. Um, it was just a hot mess. So 
Um, I and then we're like, okay, like you're moving in three because now it was going to be three more weeks, and we don't see anything packed up. So I hope that when we go there on the thirty first to get to get the keys and all that stuff, that everything is empty. I have a feel. We have a feeling that there might be things left behind, and that's not ideal. But that's what I'm sensing. The boyfriend wasn't there. She's saying she's moving to another country and um, the boyfriend's staying at his mom's and some some story that didn't add up. And I had a feeling from what I was seeing from before, maybe he's, it's kind of like a soft breakup, like they've broken up, but not officially. And then she's going to leave the country and work this job for whatever time. And then it's just kind of going to just fall apart because it just, yeah. The, the, the place is just, I don't know. I can honestly say since she's lived there, which has been about, this is the fifth year, I've never seen the kitchen sink empty, ever. Morning, Carbon. I've never seen, the, the kitchen sink is always full of, I, I don't understand if I'm coming to your house on Saturday morning at nine o'clock, why is the sink full of dishes? Don't you wash that the night before? Like I should see maybe your breakfast dishes, but yeah, so the place is not damaged. The place is looking decent. It's just going to need a paint job and that kind of thing. We want to go back and see it. We're supposed to go yesterday, but the, the contractor couldn't make it. Just to make sure that things are the way that they're supposed to be. Yeah, soft breakup. That, they're, they're not together. <laughs> that man's not together. The, the garage has his accoutrements in there. Some of his accoutrements, not much, but most of it has been removed. Um. Anything that's usable, I'll, we're going to keep, but I think it's going to be a lot of junk, a lot of junk. And what I'm most concerned about is that if she's leaving the country and she has two cats, where are those cats going? I don't think they're going to stay at the boyfriend's house for the soft breakup. Um, so she might just leave the cats right there where, where, where they are. So, so they're looking at me like, oh, you're going to hit the cats? Because my family knows that cat's not going nowhere. I said, I could do the cat, but they got to live outside because hunt the mice. I don't want no indoor cat again. I'm kind of done with that. They're just, anyways, too much, too much mess. But I don't think she's going to take all her stuff with her. And good morning, anybody that I may have missed. Um, hey, regional sky girl. Oh, thank you. So that, yeah. So, Two cats. The one cat that I saw that, that's there is a cute cat. The other one I didn't see this time, but I saw him before or her before. Um, I don't like that cat. It's a long-haired cat, and that's probably the cat that's leaving all the fur all over the place. I don't want fur and dander and and to see. It's just too much to keep cleaning and vacuuming and mopping and swiffering. It's just too much, guys. So I'm not really a fan of um, long-haired animals. You know, I, I just can't deal with that. So, but she, wait till next, wait till two weeks from now or two and a half weeks. And I'll tell you if the, if the cats were, were still there, because I have a feeling. Good morning, G, uh, Grammy's journal. I went to the feed store today. I got some seeds that I, I didn't need seeds. Do we ever need seeds? But I got some more Chioga beets. This is a brand I've been seeing at a few stores that self like feed like I haven't seen them in the, in the big box stores mind you but those feed stores have other brands I got a pink ponderosa tomato that looks pretty delicious I'm sure it's not going to be that pink hey food forest hey um going up the box good morning and I got Indian mustard giant red I do not have red mustard greens I have the green ones so I wasn't looking for them per se, but I said, oh, so I picked it up. They're two bucks, two dollars and 19 cents a pack. So I didn't need them, but, you know, they were right in front of my face. What do you expect? What do you expect is going to happen? Hey, morning, Shanna. I buy you sugar. And if I'd missed anybody, I didn't see you. So I got some and I got some more supplies at the feed store. I was trying to get back in here to get back in time to start my live at the usual time. But when I got there, I'm like, oh, I, let me look at a few things. So some mice repellent, mice tra trap, got some mice bait for the traps. 
What I'm going to do is I have an electrical trap for the rat. I'm going to put it in the run at night with the bait so that it may be when it goes in there looking for food, it may be able to go in there because it's dark outside. It's not going to see this black box per se and go in and then get zapped. So in the morning, I can just dump the bodies in the garbage and the mice as well. And I also got those fly traps because if you have chickens, you'll know there's a lot of flies. Last year, I wasn't prepared for that. So I got one of those bottles that you put some special mix, like I'll call it Kool-Aid. And then it, they go into the bottle and they drown. Um, and then once it's full, you dump the flies out and then you wash it out and do it again. That is a cheaper method because the one that was disposable was not really worth worth it to me because you're going to have to keep buying that thing over and over again. So I got a reusable fly trap. And what else? I, I planted my seeds. I haven't had good germination with everything. Good morning, Blue Lotus. I don't know about you guys. Some of my seeds didn't germinate very well. So I'm going to have to try them again. I think the house is a little bit cold and I didn't put the heating mat on. I don't really want to. So what I did is I doubled up the plastic cover. I put two plastic covers on top. It created more heat. And now some of the pot peppers are um, germinating. So that's what I'm doing. I don't feel like plugging in 50 million things and lights. It was just too much stuff. The WIG is coming to a close. Um, I've been harvesting my greens. My bok choy did not germinate in that unit. I don't know what's going on. And for you guys who do hydroponics, maybe you can tell me. When I lift up the, the, the plants and see the roots, they were looking nice, but now I'm seeing um, mold spores on the roots. I probably shouldn't have put the fish fertilizer in the hydroponics, or maybe I should have halfway through the challenge dump the water and changed it, which I didn't do. <laughs> and I know you guys usually do that. I probably should have changed the water since it's coming to a close soon. No, it's the end of April. I might, I'm, I don't know. I think it's April 5th. Hold on. Let me, it's in the paper underneath my computer. Hold on. Where is it? When does it end? I think it's April 5th. I wrote it down on this paper and I can't, I can never find things at the time. I think it's April, either the end of April or April 5th ish. Somebody type it if they if you know. Um yeah, I don't see it on this paper. So I might I might wash out the units down and just drop some more bok choy or just say, yeah, like you know, it is what it is. Um let me just make sure I'm up to date with the chat. In oh, Indiana Jackson. I don't see you, but I see someone saying hi to you. Good morning, Indiana Jackson. So I, my germination is not the best. I just dropped some marigold seeds and, oh, now I remember. I made a claim two weeks ago and I have to re, I have to cancel that claim. That, that, mm -mm. So I bought some dirt. It's, I, I, uh, uh, it's just dirt. I'm not going to call the name, but I mentioned it in my herb garden challenge, the first video. I had wanted to re, hold on, reuse hydro water too, but you too. Yeah, I I shouldn't have used those things in the in the hydroponics. Good morning, Nikki. I bought some soil. I put some peroxide on it uh, to your water to kill the bacteria and fungus. It won't. Okay, I that's what I did because I know you told me that last time. You and Mike said just I put some peroxide. I planted some some stuff. My herb garden challenge in this non soil soil. So it's so it said. I'm not impressed. Because I was hoping that I would not have any bugs and I have gnats yet again. But this time I'm better prepared because I never got rid of the sticky traps. They were always out. I had the, the rocks and I had the perlite and all that stuff there. I have my uh, mosquito bit water by the five gallon drum. I have a big tub of that been mixed since it happened in the summer of 2022. And last year I didn't have no gnats, but I only used the peat pellets. So I think I said two weeks ago, oh, I'm done with peat pellets. I'm done. I'm going to just use this new soil. I have to cancel that. I don't like up potting. I really don't. But the peat pellets have never given me no bugs. That I can say. I don't like up potting. But this dirt is not um, sterile. Good morning, Whiteside. This it's not sterile. It has worm castings. It has bat guano, which is bat droppings, and it has some softwood. I don't know what's the source of it is. Maybe the softwood, 
But it as soon as the first five days of the Herb Garden Challenge, I saw one gnat. I said, uh-oh, that was it. I took out several traps. I brought out the mosquito bit tea. I had to start watering with hydrogen peroxide and water. I had to bring out this, the cinnamon powder and bring in all this different stuff. And there's gnats. Don't get me wrong. The soil is very good. I have all of my herbs germinated. The last one was the parsley, but every last one has germinated. Most of my seedlings have germinated except for the Casper kale, which I got a few years ago from Baker Creek. So I don't think the seeds are old, but maybe this is not the right climate. Exactly. So anything with soft wood in it, I believe, is not, I'm done. I was so upset. When I opened the bag, I didn't realize that there were soft, like literal pieces of wood, sticks. No. It's, it's not, don't do it. If you have a separate room for growing your crops, if you have a sunroom, if you have a grow tent in a garage, that's different. I'm talking about me who's growing in my living room. And then there's flies all around the place. No. And once you start bringing in gnats, you, you may bring in something else. And that's what I don't want. I don't want aphids because I'm growing in bok choy. I'm growing in mustard greens. And last year they took over my hydroponics. I had to almost light it on fire. And, and that was it. Um... So it's not, it's not sterile. So if you're going to grow indoors, I rec the soil is a good soil. I recommend it. It's not for indoor growing at all. Never. If you have to use only the perlite or the vermiculite for the rocks, warning, um, juicing with Jay, peat moss and, or, um, coconut choir, anything that's additional, it may be a problem. Now, the worm castings may be fine. I know people who, who do mix it with their, their natural mix, but do not use anything with soft wood if you want to have a gnat-free home. I, I just couldn't take it. Are you, I can't find neem cake at a good price. Um, I have neem oil. I mixed it with a spray bottle, but I didn't use it. it. It's just so greasy. I did spray the top of the seedlings tray with that, but it's just so greasy. So I just use the hydrogen peroxide and I use the mosquito bit tea because that's been soaking for two years. It's still in the same drum and it's, it's, and I added another clump of uh, the pod, the uh, whatever you call it to make it stronger. And that's what I've been using. Um, if you're going to use that mix with the softwood, you're probably going to have to do the hot water and the, you know, putting it under fire. I don't know whatever you're going to have to do, but there's gnats. Within the first five days, there's already gnats. And I wasn't impressed. Good morning, Tori's brain. Good morning, uh, Regenerative Wayne. I was not impressed. So just letting you know, if you're going to go think, oh, I'm going to buy that soil. No. I went online and I read up the ingredients for like Fox Farm and uh, fro the frog one. There's a frog one that's excellent. And it says it's for indoor growing. But look at the ingredients, guys. Um... You're doing hydroponics and aquaponics. Add a good air stone to your unit to keep those. Yes, I have. I bought an air stone last year and I didn't use it this year. because I didn't do such as much hydroponics this year. Um, but once it gets cold again, I'll do the I'll I'll start growing a lot of lettuce indoors. Um, those gave me the business and it took. Yep, yeah, it took forever. So because I was already on top of my game. They're already getting stuck on the traps and stuff. And those those soils aren't cheap. Like Fox Farm is like 40 bucks here for a bag. The frog, whatever that frog was, um, frog farm or whatever it's called, about 40 bucks for a bag because you're paying for like, I guess the bat droppings and all those nutrition, which actually I'm telling you, my seedlings are happy. They're living their best life. It works. But if you're trying to have a bug-free environment, they have, you have to read the ingredients. I know they have some that sell just like, you know, the sterile perlite, vermiculite, peat moss kind of mix with no, no other plant or living, like no sticks, no softwood, no nothing. But you have to be careful. They're all in the same warehouse, right? Neem is expensive at the box stores, but I stopped growing indoors. Oh, exactly. Gnats and spiders. Yeah. Um, it is what it is. But you're in California, so you don't have to really worry about uh, winter. Good morning, David. Um, here, yeah. So I'm going to get, the plan is to get a grow tent for the garage. The problem is I got to clean up the garage. So 
once I'm in the garage, the gnats won't even be an issue. Yes, there's going to be gnats, but it won't be an issue. And I'll have to make sure that I have to um, spray for aphids because right now in the garage, the parsley had some, it was either aphids or I think it was white flies because it didn't look like aphids and something else because they're in a nice environment. So if you're going to overwinter anything, I did not spray my stuff. I just, I must have forgot that part. I should have sprayed it or sprinkled some DE on the something. I didn't do any of the above. So some of those plants, I'm going to have to prune them down and hopefully they'll spring back up once it gets warmer. Um, I put a layer of sand on top of my soil. Yeah, that's what I'm going to have to do. My mistake was that I've done that before. But I thought that this soil mix was sterile and wasn't quote unquote soil because it was advertised as a hydroponics kind of hydro kind of growing medium. And because of the wording that they used, I got screwed over. Happy, yeah, happy frog. I know it's something with the frog. So just letting you know that some of these mediums that seem like it's just a growing medium, it's soil. It has organisms inside and you're going to get gnats so just be aware because you don't want them in your house to have balance in nature one needs a concept of observation this is easily said and very few earthlings are in tune to con to concept of observation enjoy walking barefoot <laughs> yep i'm gonna be uh grounding once it gets warm enough and it's not flooding over here walk and get charged with with the environment with the earth since seeing fungus gnats, I've had to treat every four days. Yes. So I, I have the traps out. I water with mosquito bits tea only and hydrogen peroxide. I know you're supposed to water from the bottom. Good morning, GT. But it's not always feasible because the medium gets so dry that I have to make sure that the roots are getting what they need. And then to water from the bottom, I have to water so heavily for it to even get the water it, you know, but that's what's the best thing is to water from underneath. Um, and that's what you're going to have to do. But there's no shortcuts, guys. I try to think, oh, it's no bugs, bugs. If they're not infesting my house by any means, because I was keeping my eye real close. But there is gnats already. They're waiting to hatch. Waiting to hatch. And that was very disappointing. So and just to let you know, because also this soil is not cheap. This was on sale for like a $10, but it's usually almost $20 for this brand. The other brands are $45, $35 just for one bag of soil. But the thing about those soils is that it does work. So if you're doing winter sowing in like those milk jugs and stuff, maybe even outside, and you want to give it a little extra something that, so that you can really leave them alone and don't have to give it no fertilizer, some of these mixes are pretty good. You can mix it with your your other soil, not, you don't have to use it straight, but it does. I'm telling you, I, my herbs, maybe because I use hydroponics though, didn't germinate very well in the hydroponics unit. Some of the herbs I've dropped seeds in soil before, nothing. My oregano was never, it just would not germinate. All of the seeds that I dropped pretty much look like they germinated. The oregano, the, um, that's the other one I punched. I can't remember now. It's over there. Some of the ones that I've, this didn't have any success. They're, they've all germinated. The only thing different is the soil. The lights are the same. The containers are the same. The water is pretty much the same. Good morning, Jegs. Good morning. Did I miss anybody? I don't think so. But if I missed you, I didn't see you. Um. Oh, if they took over, I don't know if they're still there, Um, Nikki. You have to. The one thing I learned about gnats from watching a million and one videos from different people is Gnats is not a one and done treatment. What kills the, the larva and the eggs does not kill the adults. You have to trap the adults on those yellow sticky things or those electric zappers. And while you're getting rid of the adults, you have to make sure that you're treating the soil with um, the mosquito bits tea. That was what has recommended and it works because you can just water your plants as normal. And you can put sand on top and perlite and all that stuff on top. I, I did that before. And I mentioned to you guys that when I picked up the plant out the, out the ceramic pot and I had it in a nursery pot, the top was covered with the, the perlite. So they weren't laying eggs, but they were all coming in and out from the bottom drainage. They're, they're not dumb. They're very smart. So you think you've outsmarted them? No, you haven't. 
So you still need to water with the mosquito bit tea so that you can kill the eggs and the larva. So once you're doing that and the adults start to decline, even if they lay more eggs, the eggs are not going to survive. And before you know it, it's going to go down. So it's just, a, it's a two, it's a two tiered um, approach. The adults have to be killed with the zapper and, or the yellow sticky traps. And then you have to kill the eggs and the larva with what you're using in the water, peroxide, um, neem cake, neem oil, or the um, mosquito bit tea. And you can still do cinnamon if you want and sand. I haven't had to. And I can't put sand on top of my herbs because it's so many small, tiny seeds and they're all coming up. I need to be able to separate them at a certain point. So that particular plant, I can't do that with. I could put cinnamon on them, but I haven't had to. The, the gnats, I can tell they're, they're, not, they're not breeding because I'm killing them. If I use sand on my soil, bean juice will dig it up and act like a sand. Yeah. <laughs> cinnamon. You can try cinnamon. Um, but yeah, G Mom is saying the same thing. It's a constant treatment. It takes about four weeks to be eradicated, then weekly treatments, then larvae. Exactly. And then you just keep maintaining. So because I never stopped my gnat treatment since 2022, to be honest, I was still watering occasionally with mosquito bit tea. I kept the sticky traps out because there were there was nothing on them, but I just kept them there because they were they weren't used. So I let them stay in the plants. So when I saw something on the sticky trap, I'm like, and I saw a gnat moving in the soil on the seeding seedling trays. I'm like, mm -mm, we we on full attack now. And I kind of got water bottom watering is good. Yeah, but I was bottom watering, and when I stopped and the, you know it dried out and the plant was drying out, and I picked picked up the nursery pot they were i could see them like they're they were breeding at the bottom so maybe they moved up when i was watering to the middle and they came back down these animals are, di are diabolical they're smart the top was full of perlite they couldn't lay no eggs on the top but they found another way so you think oh i'm watering from the bottom i'm safe nope if you don't have something in that water to kill the eggs and the larva you're wasting your time these animals will find an alternative or insects, whatever, will find an alternative to, to outsmart you. And you're thinking, oh, I, I beat them. Ten weeks later, you see your whole house full of gnats and wondering why. And you won't realize why, where it's coming from. By the time you figure that out, ten more weeks have passed by and your whole house is just like you're, you're, you're like this, pushing flies. You don't want that. You have to wait to see how much water is absorbed before you water again. That too. Um, But I'm telling you, I haven't had too much of an issue, but... Good morning, um, good morning, Denise Harris. If you are expecting the soil to be sterile, read the ingredients. And that's what kind of should have been a red flag to me because the ingredients were not on the bag. I had to go onto their website to see the ingredients. And that's when I saw that it had softwood after I saw that there's sticks in, the, in this thing. So what I should have done is, and I'm doing that now, when I hydrate that soil, because it's, it's it looks like it's peat moss and, and coconut choirs, you have to hydrate it. So I'm thinking, okay, it's safe. No. When you hydrate it, because it has sticks in it, you have to either use hot water or both hot water, and then you use mosquito bit tea to hydrate it, and maybe even peroxide, because I'm just going to just be extra, to make sure that you're killing it while you're hydrating the soil before you even put them in the seed trays. And I did that with the last little bit I had in the bucket. I haven't seen gnats in those ones. So I think hyd D I think DE does work. I've used it before. I just didn't want it in the house at this point in time because it's just too much. I would have to mix it outside. Even if I wear a mask, DE is very fine, very dusty. You got to be careful. I didn't want to bother do that, but I have used it inside before. I figured, let me just kill it from the source and then the stickies. I think DE does kind of kill them but i don't see anybody really saying that online like they were using the um neem cake and they were using the uh mosquito bits they're gone now but it took over a year to get rid of oh, i'm telling you and once you have that experience nikki you don't want them nothing in your house ever again you don't even want a sun nothing no plant in your house dte is only for soft yeah so d um i think we use that de for like um the cabbages, the, um, the, I don't know if it works for snails or stuff, but I put it on everything. The, the certain beetles and certain things that come on my other plants, um, 
those red beetles that come on my lilies. I use it for um, even the soil, certain bugs, but I don't use it too heavily. I use it mostly for the chickens, um, parasites, stuff like that. I only want to put trees outside and bring them back inside. If it's outside plant, it goes in the garage and it goes back outside. I don't bring nothing in the house. I did that before too. And the sorrel and all the different plants I had that from, I had white flies in my house. I had gnats. I had roly polies and it was a hot mess. Don't do it. I put my citrus outside and then take them inside because Canada's, yeah, well, we're in, yeah, we're both in Canada. The birds, salamanders, lizards, I'll eat the bugs. Owls catches a thousand mice. Per I need an owl. I think if I had an owl around, I wouldn't have so many mice. I think I might make an owl house at the, and, a, and a bat house because when I had bats here heavily, no mosquitoes. Powdered turmeric is more powerful than cinnamon. I never knew that turmeric would help. And then uh, Dave was saying cinnamon works as well. I know cinnamon works. I've never tried turmeric, but I will just pick whatever's cheaper. But I think if I buy turmeric in bulk, it's not so bad. I'll try anything. I got, I got, um, I got that here. Washing your plants helps. Yes, I didn't wash the plants before I put them in the garage. I didn't treat the so so there's white flies and something on. I don't know. My figs are fine though. There were some gnats in there, but a few gnats in a tree is like whatever. It's not a big deal. What is mosquito bit tea? Mosquito bit tea is you you know when you buy those mosquito bits from it's that's what it's called. It's called mosquito bits, and they're. You buy them to put in your rain barrels to keep mosquitoes from breeding, or they tell you to put them in your, your backyard ponds or things like that, that it's safe. It's not, it's a natural bacteria and you take the, either you get them in pellets or you get them in like hockey pucks almost, and you let it dissolve in the water and you, it, that's what you call the tea. So you're watering your plants with like you're brewing a tea. But if there's no heat. You just dump it in there, let it dissolve for a couple of days or weeks. You shake it up. You can keep adding more water, adding more of the product, and then you water your plants with that. So that's the same thing you put in your rain barrels. Um, I think Tractor Supply usually has it. I think it's called, I think the brand is called Mosquito Bits. And that has worked for everything. It works in the rain barrels. Mind you, in my rain barrels, I've mentioned to you guys, some of you guys were like, hey, I'm not doing that. I, before we had mosquito bits, we would put a bit of Dawn dish soap in the barrel on the top to create a film, and the mosquito eggs couldn't hatch because it, it was like a sticky film, and then they would just drown. Or we would put a little bit of oil, not, not a whole bottle of oil, like a tablespoon of oil, and it creates that film on top of your rain barrel. And that tension, um, I don't know if it's tension or viscosity, one of those scientific terms, it, keep, it makes it harder for them to come out of the barrel. So they just suffocate. So that was something else that we did before we even knew about mosquito bits. And honestly, dish soap is cheaper because who doesn't have dish soap? So it's up to you. What's going to go in your garden? You know what's in your garden right now? Have the crap you've been buying and putting in your garden. And then you talk about the purity of your soil. Like, really? Miss me with that. Some of you are using so much chemicals, it's not even funny. But yeah, the big box stores have them. I know the feed stores have it. Um, but yeah, so if you have rain barrels or anything like that, or you have gnats in your house, because even house plants, not like regular house plants can have gnats. You buy them from the nursery. You bring in this lovely plant into your house and then you have flies. It's, you know, it comes in handy. Polyculture is worth a look at. It seems to do well in nature. I don't think I studied the polyculture. I got to check that out. Garlic, citronella, cayenne pepper. Yes, that helps as well. Um, citronella, I was going to buy a plant. but When I went back to buy it, it was gone. So I didn't get citronella. But I want to grow more citronella around the, the property to make that smell, to get rid of mosquitoes. But if you have enough predators, it's not so bad. But if you see that you're getting infested, that's the problem. I have, have I had a nat PTSD. Trust me. It's it's two years. This is the second year. And I was like, it was awful. Adding on sulfur backs, black strap molasses controls pests too because insects can't process sugar. And black strap also provides nutrients to the soil. I know it's good for soil. I've never used it for soil. I've always used it for like making our own special drinks. I've never used it for the garden, but 
I will try anything. I've used even baking soda and water that help with the powdery mildew. And that's also very affordable. It's so affordable. Some of the things that we're buying is absolutely not necessary. You can make your own little mixes here. And and yeah, and I, and I don't like salt and neither does the slugs and those snails. Um, but indoor growing is different. Just because you do something outdoors it's not going to work indoors. You don't have any predators indoors. It's only you and your comfortable heating and cooling environment. There's no predators. There's no nothing. So you have to rely on your sprays and whatever you're doing to keep these bugs down. But there's, yeah, treating every week, yes. Otherwise, it's not you're, you're not going to win. G-Mama is very diligent with her treatment, and she doesn't have a problem. But you have to be consistent because you are the manager of your indoor garden. Outdoor, you have a whole bunch of bugs that will be helping you out. Birds, wasps, and other things that are eating other little bugs. But if you are indoor gardening, different kettle of fish. With owls feasting on 1,000 mice and rats, this brings up the bird population because no bird eggs go missing. I see the birds actually coming looking to go lay their um, build their nests. I have a side eye. Don't come over here with that stuff again this year. Now the birds eat more bugs and you can, exactly. I don't mind them coming to eat the stuff, except for my seeds. They ate all my cannabis seeds off my cannabis plant that I didn't harvest in time. They were crunching all those seeds. So I might see cannabis just growing all over the place. Yeah, that's going to be a good look, right? <laughs> Why does she have so many cannabis plants? I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> but indoor gardening is absolutely totally different. You have to just be prepared because it can turn off a lot of people. And they'll say, oh, I'm not gardening. It's, it wasn't the gardening that was a problem. Is you thought you could bring nature in your house and you didn't do your homework. The cheapest is, uh, is all purpose flour. It keeps chewing insects from chewing. Do not use self-rising flour because of the salts. I am going to have to start using that because I have flour here that I don't even use. So, and the, and the Dawn, yeah, and the Dawn dish soap uses good for stink. I'm telling you. Some of the simplest things. Just put on some latex gloves if you don't want to touch bugs and go and do what you got to do and put them in a bucket. If you got chickens, they love those um, cabbage moth worms and all those other worms. They'll eat those off. You, you just got to do a bit of work if you don't want to use chemicals. And I think most people in my online circle, you guys, we don't want to use chemicals. So um, you need an eco. Yes, if you have a nice ecosystem in your yard, I have, I've seen a lot more birds. I even see some crows the other day. I saw a expensive bird feeder. I was laughing when the man showed me. I'm thinking of Mike's chaotic because he has these bird feeders and he's feeding the actual squirrels. He's not feeding the birds, you know. <laughs> it's supposed to be squirrel proof. He said it's expensive up front, but it's a lifetime warranty. So any problems, this company will fix it. Don't ask me the name. I have to look it up because... um. I didn't take a note. My sister took a note from him. And he mentioned that safflower, not sunflower, safflower seeds, squirrels can't stand them. So if you either have a mix with that or just straight safflower seeds, um, the squirrels don't want it. And certain birds love those seeds. He mentioned the name of the birds. I'll find out what he said. She took more notes because she's into the bird feeding thing. And I'll share that with you guys next uh, next live. But if you don't want to have the, the squirrels eating your bird feeder, yeah. Garlic in my water for mosquitoes. That does work. When I did, I did a mix. Don't ask me exactly the recipe, but I know it had peppermint mouthwash, dish soap, maybe garlic, but I can't remember. And I think it had beer in it. it, it, it that sounds really like beer, mouthwash, and something else. And you spray all around your property and it keeps the mosquitoes away for several weeks, like 30 to 60 days. Whatever that formula was, because somebody gave it to me on Facebook, it did work. It did work. So you have to just be consistent because it's not going to last the whole summer. So maybe if it lasts 60 days, but if you update it every 45 days and respray your deck, your patio, and your outdoor entertainment area, and you plant citronella, you plant, um, I planted lavender, lemon balm, and those kind of plants. They don't like those scents. So I didn't have a problem. And the wasp, I had so many wasps. They've kind of moved further out, but they're still there and they eat all the other unwanted bugs for me. I treat my house plants with neem oil before I bring them back in for the winter. 
I tried that, but it didn't give me full results. So I don't know if maybe I didn't use enough or I'm not too sure. But I also bought um, insect insecticidal soap and I make my own. That seems to really, like I wanted to just drench the plant, drench everything. And then I'll spray with neem oil once it dries out a bit. But I just make it a habit. I don't really put plants in and out the house. If it's an indoor plant, it's an indoor plant. If it's an outdoor plant and has to be overwintered, it's going in a garage, a shed, or some kind of greenhouse. I am not interested in bringing it into my house where I, like where my living quarters. No, I don't think it's worth the effort, the time, and I can't guarantee that all the bugs are dead. So I just don't even bother anymore. It, they're going in the garage. They're living their best life. They're getting rainwater. I collect rainwater, snow, melt it. I water them every so often. I give them some feed. There's a few bugs in there, but it's not infested. And that's fine. I don't like stink bugs as they taste. Taste. Who's who's eating them? <laughs> when I was in a frenzy of eating raspberries, I ate a stink bug. Oh, Lord, by accident. They are ugly tasting. So I mm -mm, look at every berry that you eat. <laughs> Indoors, what is good to get rid of stink bugs? I don't know. Who has suggestions? Stink bugs indoors. I think the Dawn dish soap would still work. And I think you have to catch them manually. You have to like put them in a cup of soapy water. You have to physically like harvest them. I, I don't know, but I don't have stink bugs in my zone. I have a trap crop and mine is located in the garage. Yeah. And trap crop is actually good, but yeah, I don't, I don't, um, bring bugs in and out, not bugs, <laughs> bring plants in and out my house anymore. Um, yeah, cannabis food, uh, it's going to be so shameful. Where's all these cannabis come? Because the birds must have spread the seeds all over the place. And those who know what it looks like, we're like, that's ganja. Shh. <laughs> Soap and water kill stink bugs. Yes. Um, I'm telling you, it's, it's going to... So I still have two plants out there that dried out out there and the seeds, I'm going to have to cut them off and see what if there are seeds in there. I think there's a few, a few seeds. I haven't planted any yet this year. I might plant a few cannabis again. Um, I don't need to, but I probably will. I haven't used them. I'm going to, I'm looking to get one of those things that G mama mentioned that, that infuser thingy device. I don't feel like using a slow cooker or a pot. I want to just put everything in the machine and it makes me the, the ointment and I just move on to the next thing. My my time is just so limited. I don't want to sit there and figure out if I'm doing it right unless I have a book that actually spells everything out for me. I don't want to start that. Um, but yeah, I, I can make some oil. I can make some butter. I can make some tea. Hemp everywhere. <laughs> Radiation of the soil. Okay, let me that the help of my soil. Yeah, I had to keep my gloves on. And then I know I had an infestation outside with uh, earwigs. So I'm going to rotate some of my crops. I did assemble yesterday during Gina's Live. I assembled a, another raised bed. I was going to do two, but while we were doing it, I'm like, you know what? One's enough because there's one whole bed that I did not use. It's still just sitting there with rabbit and all kind of natural compost broken down. And I'm like, if I want to pick up a move or make some other arrangements, I don't want to have too many things to move. It's like, oh, you can just take the, take the bed with you. Yeah, but it's another thing to disassemble. And, you know, I, I don't think so. And I'm probably going to bag up the soil and take it with me too. Because my soil is straight leaf, rabbit, and it's, now it's going to be chicken manure. So I'll bag that up in, in um, those straw whatever baggy thingies and take the dirt with me um, to fill my raised beds. Um, a yeah, stink bug sandwich. I know. <laughs> if any one of you know how to get rid of, let me know. They were relentless last year. Are leaf footed bugs a predator or they're a pest? I've seen them. I've heard about them. I I don't think I had them that many. But are they a pest or are they more of a um predator for the other bugs? I'm not sure. I'll have to look that up. But if anyone knows, we'll, if not today, we'll talk about it, you know, certainly in the future. Um, the best killer of bugs in the soil are beneficial nematodes and flying insects can't fly with dish soap and oil. Yep. 
No sandwich, please. Morning, Erica. Never told girl making good. I'm just scrolling down, scrolling, seeing. I think my internet, I could see it's flicking or flickering. So if I cut out, something's going on with the internet. Um, you can boil peppermint and catnip in water for for the fumes to keep away. I am actually growing catnip for the first time right now in my herb garden challenge. So that's to attract the cats so they can hunt for the mice. And I think catnip is good for us as well, right? I think I'm back. I think the internet's back. Okay. Um, if you don't have a diffuser. Okay. But I wonder if I can make peppermint and catnip make a, if I use one of those same devices that you use to make the ointments, if I make a tincture or an oil with the peppermint and catnip, I can put some drops in my diffuser and use that to get rid of the, so that's also an option. <clears throat> which is why I want the device. I don't want to sit here and have to make all these things from scratch. I just don't have the time. Good morning, Can't Stop. Um, they will attack you and fly in your face. We caught jars full of them. I don't know. I, I've heard of them. I've heard people talk about them. I haven't had, I'm, not, I'm in a cold zone, so we don't have that problem here. Pests they are in my avocado tree. Oh, okay. So those are pests. They're not, they're not predators. But usually goes after the pomegranate tree. That's what I have to take better care of is my trees. I want to be transplanting them in a bucket, moving them up top. They're budding, they're blooming. My fig tree that I'm supposed to be propagating, and I I watched GT's video recently. He just did another video on the fig. I'm like, perfect timing because I have the the one that was growing all sideways. It's leafing out, budding out, but there's some branches that are kind of crisscross that are near the bottom that are small. Um, I'm going to cut them, and I don't know about the node, if there's even a node, but I'm going to cut them and just see if they if they root with some rooting hormone. Yeah, I was... <laughs> you have to watch the beginning and rewind, um, Can't Stop. I told a few stories <laughs> of what happened over the last few weeks. They Oh, they're pests. They suck the juice out of tomatoes, leaves, but oh... That is horrible. So all your hard work is just, mm -mm. so they're pests. That's a good, um, we're going to have to do some research on that one and find natural remedies to get rid of these bugs. Sugar and water sprayed on bugs and can't fly, so it's easy to see what kind of you're dealing with. Lizards love flies. Birds feed on young bugs. Hummingbirds feed on young flies. Well, I'm going to have a lot of flies because I got the two fly traps with that syrupy thing from the feed store because last year those chicken manure was just flying up the place. Okay. You got catnip as well. My, I have three compost bits. I had one. I bought two more from the um, recycling plant. Cause when you buy them from there, it's cheaper than buying it from the store. I think it was like 30 bucks a piece, but in the box stores, it's like $80 for one compost bin. I set up the second bin. It's full to the brim of just manure and, and bedding pine shavings and stuff and straw. The first one is like gardening trash, my juicing pulp and all that kind of stuff. But I put some manure in there now too, because the, the mice chewed through that one and they were like living their best life. So I'm trying to put some manure in there to turn them off. The third one is empty. I'm going to have to start using that one. That's how much manure I have from the chickens with just approaching the one year anniversary. So I got them April of last year, April of this year. And the run is full of straw manure bedding. At least it's about eight inches thick. Because when I look down of where it started, it's about eight inches thick. So all of that's going to be scraped out and put into the beds. So you can imagine. I don't need to buy fertilizer. All of stuff that I already have bought in the past, I may use it, maybe. But I'm not going to be repurchased. I don't need to repurchase. Between the comfrey, um, the chop and drop, between the chicken manure, the um, leaf mold and leaf mulch, and then that kind of stuff, it's not going to be an issue. And yesterday, my sister and I, I cleaned up the yard a bit, like all the, li the lilies and the irises. We did not do a fall cleanup. And I'm hoping, and from what we noticed, by not cleaning up the plants in the fall, we had more bugs overwintering. Now, yes, there's bad bugs, but we definitely saw ladybugs. 
So the ladybugs are still here, which is what I wanted because we left plants for them to hibernate in. So as soon as the gardening season picks up, these ladybugs should be already doing their job. That's the plan, plus some other good beneficial bugs. The bad bugs are still going to be there. And most of the bad bugs come from the butterflies laying their eggs. Now, I learned recently. Yep, yeah, I had to put, Dave, I see your carbon. Yeah, I'm putting more straw on it. That's where I was kind of like, wasn't doing it right. But now I'm putting more straw, more straw. I, I, I borrowed a pitchfork. I turned the stuff. It's so muddy in there because of where I'm located. The rain just kind of pulls there. I don't have it in a good spot, but I have no other choice. But I'm adding a lot more straw, more carbon. It doesn't smell. I even put some DE and I put some of the, the barn dry or stall dry to add that, you know, the, the dry layer. And I'm just turning it, letting it air out. And then they're scratching and looking for worms. And it's perfect. I'm going to have some rich soil, rich soil. And people already put in their their claim. I want a bag. I want them again. Yeah, no problem. Cedar oil in your diffuser will help keep bugs away. I have cedar oil and I put it in a spray bottle and I made a mix last, last summer to keep the flies and the bugs away. And it does work. I think I even have sandalwood oil and other things. Uh, cedar mulch, same thing. It, it just, it really works. And it's natural. Build several birdhouses and do polyculture. This will give you some balance to your sanctuary. See you later. Okay, take care, um, Howie. And if you didn't see Howie, he was on uh, Grow Big TV this week. I think it was Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. If not Thursday, it's Tuesday. But if you check, they had two lives last week, Grow Big TV. No, it was Tuesday because Thursday was AJ the worm guy. And then there was a hurricane and, and Corky had to step away. So Thursday was AJ's worm on Grow Big TV. I would recommend me watching the Thursday live. The Tuesday live was Howie of Food Forest Permaculture. Check that out. I have to rewatch. I, I didn't wasn't there for the whole thing, but I'm going to rewatch them and just get the uh, conversation. They have a lot of knowledge. So check them out. AJ does worms and he raises worms so he can give you a lot of information about that. They are red and black legs when they are in the young stage. Then they grow up and become brown and white lines on their legs. He, okay, you're talking about the um the leaf, the leaf foot thingy. Yeah, I'm using a lot, yeah, more carbon for sure. Now I know why David Corey, I think I think it was last year, maybe it was 2022, when we were mocking him because he he didn't go out and water his chickens for like a house, so many days. He goes, they're not dumb. They're going to go and eat the snow. And then we said, okay, we're going to call CAS on him. But they're not dumb. They will dig and find water. And, the, and they will dig and find food. They will dig out of the coop if you let them and don't fill up the sides. But they that's why he puts food on the floor and makes them look for it because that's their nature. When you have it in the dish, it's just... They're not living their nature. They like to go and dig. So now I just throw food on the floor, corn, and let them go and dig for it. They love kicking and scratching. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, they produce a lot of a lot of manure, a lot of manure. Like I have six birds, and I, like the amount of like, crap morning, noon. As soon as they go into the run, it's like all of them say, yes, I can like doo-doo outside. And then they're all just dropping it. And then some of them it stinks. I'm like, did somebody fart? Did one of you guys pass the gas? What's that smell? Like I'm outside. It stinks. Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I've been looking for bird feeders. Okay. And houses. Okay, you're going you're gonna to do that as well. Yeah, bird houses are good. Biochar, yes. He talked about biochar, and I had a live about biochar as well on Grow Big TV. And I know they sell it, but if you can get your own or learn how to do your own, I think it's going to be, whoops, it's going to be better. Um, It's good for the soil. But yes. These are points that you need to learn. We're all in different zones, but we have to learn to balance. That's the secret balance. Um, use that. Yeah. Chicken manure. I'm telling you, you don't need anything else. All the stuff that we're buying. When you go and see how much chicken manure costs with the ones that are in pellets, it's, I think it's like 18 bucks for a tiny box over here. I have a whole bunch. Even if, my chickens don't lay eggs, even though I make you know a whole fuss about them not laying their eggs. They're giving me more than just eggs because they're giving me manure and they're scratching and turning it and making it into a rich soil. So the run 
is more broken down than the one that's in the compost bin. Because what I do is I clean their their um, roosting area every day. That goes in a bucket. That goes in the compost bin. Whatever's in the run just stays there. And they just keep turning it and turning it. So now that it's going to be spring, when it gets a little bit more dry, when it's not raining so much, I'm going to empty all that out. I'm going to maybe put some sand or something, I don't know, and then fill it back up with leaves. I have two bags of leaves from the fall in the garage and fill it up with um, straw. And then as I keep, you know, making a mess and stuff, I'll keep adding more straw, more straw, pine shavings, more leaves, more, you know, I throw in uh, greens and lettuce and stuff. And whatever they don't, don't eat just sits there and breaks down and they keep turning it. That is going to be rich soil compared to what's in the um, compost bins. All that stuff. Stall dry is your best friend. Baking soda, diet tomatoes, earth. These things are, are DE is an excellent product. I put it in their feed. I put it in their dust bath. I put it in the run and in their coop. Keeps away bugs, insects, mites. Keeps away, um, helps with deworming and parasites. It helps keep things off of their skin, the, the mites and the lice. It helps with even your garden. It You can put that in, in even human. Like there's so many things for diatomaceous earth. Also today when I, at the feed store, I bought for my personal self. Hey, you grow roll. Good morning. For my personal use, I bought a bag, a 25 kilogram bag of Arm & Hammer baking soda. So it's in my trunk still. I didn't empty my car when I came home. I'm going to go uh, to another cash and carry, buy a five gallon bucket because they're cheaper there. Once the bucket is sanitized and washed, I'm going to pour half of it in there and then give half to my sister. We use a lot of baking soda to wash our vegetables. Um, we use it for laundry, even for like your own natural carpet fresh to vacuum up. There's several things that we use baking people, uh, even for your natural toothpaste. So instead of me buying all these little boxes all the time, I asked the guy, he goes, it's exact same baking soda as you buy in the store. The only difference is that the one at the feed store says feed grade. So you might think feed grade, is there something different between feed grade? And he goes, sodium bicarbonate is sodium bicarbonate. It's, it's the same thing, but the wording kind of throws you off because you think it's something different. No, it's the same thing. So when you buy the 25 kilogram bag at the feed store is $25. If you buy that same size bag at the cash and carry restaurant supply store, it's 60 something dollars because I checked the website, but it's the exact same thing. But like all of us, we think because it says farm grade, it's different than the food grade. Sometimes it is depending on what you're buying. But in terms of baking soda, Sodium bicarbonate is sodium bicarbonate. There's nothing different. So I'm trying to tell people, as I learn, do not buy it from the restaurant supply store. Buy it from the feed store. It's the exact same thing. It's Arm and same brand. Maybe the feed store bag is more like a of a papery bag, but the restaurant may have a nicer lined bag. But it's the same thing. So why are you gonna pay three times more? Don't make no sense. And yeah, stall dry, keeps the, the place dry, keeps the place more fresh. It, it's also stall dry, if you read the ingredients, it's diatomaceous earth and bentonite clay and maybe something else. All of those things are natural. All of those things have different uses. I think people use bentonite clay for hair treatments. The, there's a special brand that people use um, as a might something. Same, it's the same thing. Same thing. Feed them more protein. Oh, they get enough protein. They get enough protein. You don't want to overdo it. They they were on a higher protein feed for the winter months. I'm going back to the uh, layer feed, and they'll get their protein from... You have to remember, I give my girls a lot of greens. I give them mung beans, sprouts, all kinds of sprouts. Protein is, is from plants, too. That's where all the vegetarian large animals get their protein from. So they're getting protein from flies. I give them um, freeze, what was it, grub tear? Not grub tear, I don't have the brand name here, but it's grubs, not not soldier fly love. I think it's grubs, whatever. Not soldier flies, the other ones. Mealworms, sorry, mealworms. They have beans, they get greens, they get all that stuff. They get a lot of protein. 
you know, um, yo, yeah, exactly. Miseducated, maybe exactly. Um, yes, that but stall dry is what keeps the urine down, that ammonia smell in barns and coops, especially if your barn or your coop, like mine is on the lawn. But if you're on like a concrete pad or something like that, sometimes you have to like scrape everything out, power wash it, and you may put some DE down, stall dry down first, and then your bedding because it's that odor is still gonna be there. It for me, I only get that bad stink when it's right now when it's rainy and wet. But yep, chickens is all you need. Chickens is all you need. I don't have to buy any more fertilizer, and I'm I'm actually it's it's better. Um. I think that our dependency on the DE should be food grade. But as I said, the one that I buy from the feed store says it's farm. I forgot the wording that it said. I talked about a few months ago. There was a particular wording. It didn't say food grade, but it said something. And the wording threw me off. So when I researched it, it's pretty much the same thing. And it says on there it's safe for, you know, horses, chickens, and all the different animals. I buy that and I use it. I do have food grade one here in a separate bucket. But that was so much more expensive than the 25 kilogram bag from the feed store. And I'm prone to believe that it's pretty much the same thing. It's even ground down to the same fineness. It, it's so read the, read the bag though, but. It may not say food grade, but read the specs from the manufacturer. I think you'll it'll be almost the same. Household helps them lay. At, yes, I I um I've been giving them food, but now that we're in the spring season, I'm gonna um find some other sources of food. They eat a lot of chickpeas because a lot of people who are vegetarian give me their leftovers that they didn't eat, the chickpea curry and all kind of stuff. They love that. They had trout. They had salmon. They had all kind of food. Um, they're getting actually very picky. They're getting a little bit too um, picky. But food grade, DE. But it may not say that word food grade, though. And when it says the word food grade, the price goes up. I'm just telling you. But read the wording. I forgot what it said. It said something. It didn't say food grade, but it said something. And it was basically equivalent. And it was much cheaper. Um, what's everyone's temperature? Oh, Nightbot's not working, is it? It's been giving people problems. My temperature, I'll have to Google it to give it to you guys in Fahrenheit because I'm Celsius. It says here right now I'm at three degrees Celsius. Which is 37.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Which to me is mild, but to my you guys will say, oh, it's freezing. Uh, to me, it's just it's just mild. <laughs> Um, but yeah, DE is a very important baking soda is exactly, exactly David. So they, they know that they're going to throw people off with the wording by saying farm grade versus if it's, if it's baking soda, it doesn't matter if it's, there's no such thing as farm grade. It's just weird, but they, they confuse people. Rock salt is rock salt unless it's mixed with herbs like lavender, etc. They throw off a lot of people because people are so, Hey, um, good morning, Rambo. People are so scared to make a mistake or use the wrong thing. And they know that and that people are looking for a food grade. They're looking for the exact wording and whatever the price is, they're going to pay whatever the price is. Like, but I'm like, nah, man, it's the same damn thing as the other one. Same thing. But people don't want to shop for themselves at a feed store. That seems a little odd. Like you're going to the animal feed store and you're buying things for yourself. Yeah, because it's the same damn thing. You can get a bag of corn, dry corn. Corn is corn is corn. The only thing is that the type of corn is different, but it's still corn. If it's for a horse, for a, uh, a goat, for whatever, it's the same corn that they're going to make. And they can grind and make cornmeal or they can make polenta. Or they can make coarse grain corn. Like it's all the same. I'm just saying, do your research. Obviously, that I'm not giving you no actual advice. I'm not responsible for you doing foolishness or eating stink bugs. It's your problem, not mine. Don't come to me for that. But look at the ingredients, look at where it's made, look at the manufacturer. Sometimes a factory has exact same address and the exact same name. Like it's exact same. Yeah, use bentonite clay for my hair and your skin products. It's the same thing. So we use it on our product, on our body under a certain name. But then when it's for an animal, sometimes it's something different. Same thing. Same thing. But stall dry, 
I did notice that the price has gone up through the roof. I got those things for like eight bucks a bag on clearance. Now the bag is $18. And if you want a bigger bag, it's like almost $30. So if you're going to use stall dry, use it, use it very sparingly. Don't be heavy handed with it because it's not cheap, but D E is cheap. So what I did was I have, I bought a jug of the stall. It's called coop fresh. Coop fresh is pretty much, it is stall dry under a different name. So I just pour the stall dry into the coop fresh. I didn't know that, that when I realized, and I add more DE to it, maybe even add some baking soda to it. That's what I do. And I make it a little thinner. And then I use that because you got to make your dollar stretch. You can't be spending all this money all here and there. And then you're not getting the money back. You got to make it stretch a little longer. Uh, yeah. G <laughs> Nightbot is gone. He's on vacation. I want to try some chicken manure, but I have to get I'm not sure where you live, G-Mama, but I'm pretty sure if you ask around, you may be able to get something from a farmer. It may be un out of reach, but if you go once a year and get a big old bag of, of manure, it may be worth it. Because the ones from the store are pellets. And I don't think it's as rich as... See what you can get. Because if you're still in Ohio, Ohio is a very big farming state. So there must be somebody that can get you something, if not you, but somebody else who knows and can get it for you. Because my uncle, who used to be a farmer, he, he gave us a lot of stuff. We would say, we need some hay for the rabbits. We need this, that, third. Okay, no problem. Give me two weeks when I'm in town. And he would just get me the stuff. I could buy a bag right now of hay from the feed store, of scrap hay, for $2 for a huge bale. If I put that in the chicken run, because I could see the actual seeds in there still, those girls will go bananas. And I probably will do that when I do my spring cleaning. I'll empty everything out. I'll put a, a old, like a scrappy, they call it like a leftover bale of hay. They wrap it with plastic and just put it in their hole and they'll break it up for me and they'll find all those seeds and eat them. So you'll be surprised. There might be somebody at the feed store or the farm store that can get you some chicken manure or know where you can get it. Um... UK don't allow chickens to have house scraps. They are scared of chicken diseases. Sounds like my. How can you get diseases from house scraps? That is, diseases come from diseases, whether they're airborne, whether the hygiene, whether exposure to other birds or other flocks. If you allow other, my run is covered, so other birds can't um, defecate and in the run. That's where they can get other. That's why. The mouse and the rat getting into my run is a problem because if they're doo-dooing and the girls are pecking, they could be eating them. That's toxic. That's not good for them. So, but house scraps, that makes, no and who's going to come and check? Who's going to check that the doo-doo had some rice and peas in there and I, and I give them some um, curry chickpea and I, who's going to check? The only way they're going to know is if your neighbor calls and tell them, which they will, because neighbors are so sketchy and tell on you. Yeah, somebody around you has chickens, G Mama. Trust and believe. Don't worry about that. Yeah, read the ingredients. Uh, am I still behind? I think I'm catching up. It seems like I'm a mile away. 65 in Dallas today. I think uh, Jeg said it was 70 something. He's in Georgia. You girl also is 38. She is in Ohio. And Psalms is in Chicago, 53. 72 in Georgia. Who 60s, high 60s next three days. We're getting rain again on Thursday. I don't want no more damn rain, but my family's happy because they have their rain barrels. They filled two barrels and they have four. So the next rainfall, they, they have a funnel off the roof. So they turned it to now the other two empty ones. So they're going to have their barrels full before it starts. So that's what we, that's the goal. I don't have my rain barrels purchased yet. My east trough is breaking off even more now. I need to get some things repaired. It's going to be a whole hot mess, but if I can get a couple of rain barrels full, that will get me a good start for the spring season. I know it's it's funny seeing Psalms in Chicago. Chicago's a rough, rough area. Oreo has, and I and my friend still storing up her rabbit doo-doo on her balcony. So it's literally looking like ch cocoa puffs because it, it dries up like little chocolate balls, literally. If I hated somebody really badly, I could be like 
the help, if you watch the help and make a whole something and it's not chocolate. If you watch the movie or read the book, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, come the chickens come in. <laughs> so that's that. What else happened? Something else happened. Oh, two things happened. My I was a bad chicken mama this week. Really? So one day I saw that the water was getting low. I'm like, okay, they have enough water for the day. No problem. Um, tomorrow I'm going to refill their water. So I filled up the jugs of water in the house and I let it sit overnight to evaporate. But before the day was even done, I'm ready to go on the road and do some errands. I said, you know what? Let me go check on the girls before I leave. I wasn't going to check on them. Something told me, go check on the girls. Take you two seconds. Go check on them before you leave. When I go and look, the water tip over. Not because it tipped over, because it was probably empty and it was it was like so light that it was dry. And it tipped over. And they're looking at me like, give me like, you know, that noise, like that noise. I'm like, why so damn loud? Shut him up, man. So noisy, cussing them off. Then I'm like, oh, Lord, you have no water. Shame of me. I had to go clean the, the, the waterer because they still have the heated water out there now. Fill up the water and give them water. And as soon as I put the water down, there was no pecking order. There was no fighting. They were all running to the water and just go, 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 go. like literally, you know how they, they scoop it up and scoop it up and push it back in their beak. Like for 10 minutes. And I'm sitting there like, oh, Lord, uh, how mean of me. And then something else happened. I can't remember. I did I did something that I shouldn't have done. Oh, another day, the same day that I burned my face off with the hot chili flakes. I went to check for eggs later on. And I there was eggs. So I'm like, oh, we have four today. Got the eggs. Went back outside. Did not open the tunnel. So I would have been out till late. And then they would have been stuck out in the run and nowhere to sleep because they can't access the coop because I closed the tunnel. So something told me, go check. And again, ah, no, they'll be fine. They know how to get to bed. Something told me to go check. I went and checked. Tunnel was closed. So they would have been out, which I don't like. That's dangerous because the animals that are digging up my lawn and coming around, I don't think they know that I have chickens. They don't seem to be going there for no chickens. But if they were out there all night sleep, having to sleep till I get home and I had to probably pick them up and bring them into the coop, that wouldn't have been a good look or good for them. So I had to, I'm like, man, I'm getting sloppy. But it wasn't my fault. The pepper burned my eye. I couldn't see properly. So that was, that was. <laughs> oh, Psalms carries a big stick. So that's what happened this last few weeks. But I'm st I hope you all are starting your seeds. I think most of you are dropping seeds. I know Cece's dropping her seeds. I know um, Psalm. I know Dave is dropping seeds out outdoors. He doesn't have our cold climate. Cece did some milk jugs as well. I know GT is dropping seeds. I know for sure Mike. He, Mike's doing seed hauls, but I know he's dropping seeds. And uh, quite a few people. I can't even keep track. Like I, I watch as much as I can. Fifi's dropping seeds. Lash has been dropping seeds. She just always, she never stopped. She puts them directly outside. Most times, some things are inside. Um, the Herb Garden Challenge is going on. Check that out. The uh, WIG is coming to an end. I'm trying to get my video done, but who knows? Um, sometimes the computer's not working and cooperating, so then I have to just do what's, what the deadline is. Um, so, yeah, just keep dropping seeds. Keep growing food. Keep collecting your seeds. We all know what's going on with that purple tomato, and people be, you know, on this purple tomato. We already talked about it. I don't have nothing else to say about it, really. I don't think it's that important to my ecosystem or what I need to do and what I need to eat. There's enough food out there that's been created that's healthy. Even when you include the hybridized food, even when you include cross-pollination, open, like there's enough food to eat. There's enough anthocyanins. There's enough things to, to eat. I don't need to be springing in this into my, my garden. And I, I'm not planning on. So I'm buying seeds, not because I always need them, but because I thought, you know what? I don't have this. I don't have that. Let me buy it. It's only two bucks. Whatever I donate to the library, the library, I went there and I got three. Let me show you the three tomatoes I bought. One second. I don't have those tomatoes, but they had them and that saved me a lot of money. So let me share that with you. Um, and they also, what else did the woman give me? Hold on a second here. One second. I'm trying to find it. She gave me something else. 
I don't know where it is. Okay, so I went to the library, I think it was two weeks ago now, for um, they launched the seed library. Yeah, GT never stopped dropping seeds. Exactly. And that, and when you guys drop seeds, it keeps me motivated because I'm like, I ain't planting nothing. I ain't doing the garden. I'm going to cut back. I say that every year. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And then you just, you just get inspired watching people drop their seeds. Mm, this thing is filling. My God, this, this milkshake. Well, it's a smoothie. I'm trying to cut back on the junk food. I messed around and dropped like 80 tomato seeds. Now the struggle of saying, well, all to keep is hard. What I did one time was I put them in cups and I labeled them with like either a marker on the cup or a piece of tape. And then, and I took them to church and let people take the seedlings. And a lot of people did take them because it's like, you save them the time and maybe they don't have those um, tomatoes. I'm just going to catch up with the, ch uh, the chat. I haven't done any cucumbers yet. Last year, I didn't do any cucumbers because the bed that I had there had to be thrown out on that fence line. And, and I would have to get some either containers or something so I could can start i want to do direct so i think my internet just cut out again and have the cucumbers on the um that fence line i don't know what's going on with the internet because internet, i'm gonna have to call them because i've been complaining that they give me back yeah you already have i saw you with the watermelons yeah, you already have them. You dropped more seeds too but i went to the library and the the teacher who taught the she taught about doing uh, patio gardening. She gave us seeds. She had two seeds in a bag, like a whole bag. And we could take out, you know, a little bit in a smaller bag. So I got some more bee balm from her. I didn't need it because I just ordered my stuff from West Coast Seeds. But I'm like, hey, free up taking some seeds. And I could give them away to other people. And I took, she gave us a milkweed to attract more monarch butterflies. And then the tomatoes that they had, because they had some other plants, but I already have them. So I didn't really want to take them. But they had Amish paste tomato. I don't have that. Dark galaxy. I don't have that. And white beauty beef steak. Never grew that before in my life. So I only took three this year because I don't need anything else. And I will harvest as many as I can. So if you guys don't have these seeds or you do or the white one, eventually they'll get around to you. Um, I have to mail out some stuff still. And... The seeds that I donated, I didn't see them. So what I realize is happening is it goes to a central location and then they share it throughout the library network, which I'm not really a fan of, but I guess it's fair because then everybody gets to have a little bit potentially. But some of what I donated is like, I don't know. I was kind of wanted it in my neighborhood, but I guess not. So it's okay. So they put it to the central area and then they, they share it as much as they can. So I'm going to have to collect more seeds again of some of those same plants that I donated because I only had so many of certain kind of peppers. But yeah, you can never have, you never have to plant seeds. To me, yeah. So I'm going to uh, plant these three tomatoes plus the pink one that I got that I showed you I just bought here, which is the pink ponderosa just to collect more seeds and then donate them. I don't want to have too much variety, even though I keep saying, I'm going to cut back. I'm going to cut back and grow more of the same thing so that I can can them and, and freeze them. I don't want to have 50 million different things, but I will do a few others just to collect seeds and share out the seeds. I gave as many of the cayenne pepper as I can. There's only a few people left that I know that don't have it. So I'm going to give them the seedling um, and then I'm going to give it away. I'm gathering giant white tomatoes this year. Oh, you have? Okay, I've never heard of, of a white tomato in my life. I've seen yellow. I've seen orange. I have the pineapple one, which is kind of orangey, yellowish. But I've never seen a white one. So that's going to be different. But I'm going to try it. Your zone change. I don't know if it really changed, but so they say. So you change the way you grow. 
that's the plan. The Romas are all for my next door neighbor because that's the only kind they like so far. Yeah, I'm telling you, just label them. I put them on the table saying, you know, free. I labeled what it was so they know what kind of tomato it is. And then by the time you, you, you know, um, they close the church down and lock it back down, all the seedlings were gone. People will take it and grow it because it's, you've done the work for them. Um, I'm growing the giant white tomato. That's it. Oh, that is. Okay, the autocorrect. But um, <laughs> I can only do personal sized melons. Yeah, I'm only going to do um, the smaller variety, the, the yellow one, sugar baby. I'm going to plant some big ones in, in a gorilla gardening behind the fence line and whatever happens, happens. I have to do some more squash this year. I didn't do any squash last year. And I I missed it because I didn't have anything to really overwinter because the year before I was eating squash until February. And it took me through the winter months. So I'm definitely going to grow some butternut, some buttercup, some of the um, long neck squash and that kind of thing. Good morning, Educate Natural. Korean tomatoes. Never heard of those. Are those sweet? Oh, and G-Mom says, I found new Korean melon to try and hopefully it's sweet. I don't think I, I took seeds from a Korean melon that we got at the store. So hopefully, but I can't grow too many melons because they will cross certain ones of the same genus will cross pollinate. So I am trying to make sure that they're of different genuses so that there's not that cross pollination because I want to collect the seeds to donate and I want to give people as um, authentic as possible. So that's the goal. But that's pretty much it for me. I talked for. It seemed like, what, an hour and a half? And this smoothie is still, like, not going anywhere. <laughs> but I'll drop the link. If anyone wants to come up for a few minutes, that's fine. And um, there are so many melons and so many squashes, too. I even, I think um, Sam got me into the Table Queen. I bought it. I tried to grow it. But the problem that I have is sometimes when you up pot things, your fingers get tangled up in something and you end up snapping it or killing it. And um, it's too late to start over again. I have a short growing season, so I have to make an effort to plant more starts in the first place, just in case a few of them I damage by accident because you're trying to be gentle and then you're, you snap something. I think I snapped the lot. Yeah, I snapped a few squashes last year. My cucumbers I bought from the from the uh, nursery. It didn't do well in the first place. They didn't look like they they liked the soil or the spot. And then I did something. I snapped, you know, the one of the vines, and it was the main vine, and that was that. So I didn't have a good success with um, my transplant. That's the thing. One thing I have never grew until this year. Winter squash. Winter squash is excellent. It will save you a lot of money. I don't think I have kusha. Um, in terms of cumin, David, we grew cumin by accident and flax because we had some seasonings, the herbs or whatever you call them, and they fell at the front of somebody's house and then they grew. So we grew cumin and we grew flax. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure if you take the seeds from the um, the fresh seasoning department at the store and drop them, you can get cumin. But that's up to you if you want, like, from the garden center. But we dropped them on the floor by accident, and they went into the cracks of the patio. And then we saw flax over here and cumin over there. And I think I, I, think I saw cumin seeds. Is it cumin? You know what? I'm going to check this brand online, the same brand that I just bought. I'm pretty sure I saw cumin today for the first time. If I did see it and I find it there, I'll get it. Even if you don't need them by the time I get back to the feed store, I'll still get them because they're not going to, you know, they're not going to um go unused. I want some kusha as well. I was going to order from, where did I see kusha? I think it was Baker Creek or MI Gardener. I think I was going to order. I still have a whole thing of, uh, in the basket. I haven't cashed it out. Yeah, it's a regular brown one too I, that I saw um, 
some. But I think I saw a coom in there and I was strained and it um and I didn't see did I see I'm looking for fenugreek, but I think Sam just sent me the fenugreek, right? Marshmallow, yeah. Sam just sent me the fenugreek, the marshmallow, and the king of bitters. So all I need now, yeah, I think I can find the cumin for you. I'll check. But you might find somebody else locally that will find it for you faster. Oh, Tigsy got Kusha. Mike has candy roaster seeds. If you need seeds between Mike and GT, you can, you know, get seeds. They have every variety and they they've planted them as well. But the candy roaster squash, that sounds good. I need some black cumin seeds. I've seen black cumin, but I haven't seen quote unquote seeds. So I'm gonna check that out. Oh, you okay? I'll I'll um you're talking about the um the kusha. Okay, I'll uh, send you my address. I think your email is your email on your channel, um, Tigzi. I can email you my mailing address. The name of the melon is Silver Line and Wa Meboya Melon. I'm not sure if I can grow them together though. I'm going to start mixing all these foods together like a, in the wild. Not so much. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to I'm I'm not going to let it grow wild, but I am going to be intercropping a lot more. I um see a lot of people having a lot of bug pressure this year. Those of you in warmer climates that is it's not affecting me yet, but I see that some of you all already have a lot of bug pressure, aphids, white like already. And I I'm not seeing a lot of those people intercropping. So I, I asked one of the persons, a big channel, I asked, do you guys practice intercropping? They said, yes. But the beds that they were in were just greens. I didn't see like garlic in their onions, maybe some leeks. I didn't see like, you know, nasturtium. I didn't see a, a mixture of stuff to kind of be trap crops for the aphids and stuff. So you have to definitely intercrop if you want to call it, you know, letting it loose and go wild, but you have to intercrop. I'm very like neat and orderly, linear. Okay. All this is over here. All the carrots are over here. That's going to have to go out into the trash bin. You're going to have to intercrop carrots with other things. You're going to have to, if you want to, you know, keep the bugs away and confuse them, you're going to have to intercrop a lot more. I grew black cumin, but the seeds aren't germinating. Hey GT. Good morning. But the Grand common rising, one has Tigo. Grand Rising. Yeah, how you doing? I've never grown cumin at all. But I grew it by accident. It fell on the patio. So I can't help you. Holes and Nancy's home said growing a sweet Korean melon up to the cattle pounds for years ago in their old house. I like their channel, Holis and Nancy. They he shows the whole process in one video. Like he records almost over over a year. And keeps track of the clips and then he puts them into one. Like that is, that's a library. His channel is a library. Yeah. You see the beginning to the end. And he does container gardening and in the um, in-ground gardening. So mm -hmm. if you haven't heard of him, him and his wife, definitely watch their channel. I'm doing a lot of intercropping this season. I was laughing at your last video, GP. Those chickens, and you're like, ow! And, and they're pecking. Oh, yeah. You're talking about the fig cutting, and they're pecking your hand. And then the other one was pecking yeah. your. Yeah. And, and then they messed up. I done messed up. Um, we have like they have half of they have one half of the garage basically. Yeah. And that's where we let them out during the day and stuff, and they play around and stuff and do what they do. And then we have like a barrier between it. Yeah. And so I didn't put. The things on top, I don't put stuff back where it goes. My wife always complains about that. So I didn't put it back. And then I go over there. This was like a month ago they ate my sugar cane. My sugar cane had been growing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm all happy. I got it in a 25 um, grow bag or whatever. You know, I'm happy about it. But they didn't went over there and ate it. But two <laughs> weeks ago, they went over there and they ate my potatoes. I had potatoes that were growing in the grow bag. And Isn't that dangerous for chickens, potatoes? Yes, it is. Nightshade, yes, yeah. It is. Yes, it is. They fine. They fine. They ate the they um because it was die. growing. They didn't die. <laughs> they ain't dead. They're good. They and I and I told my wife, I said, monitor them for three days. I got a camera in there. So 
you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm able to, you know, see what actually can happen. I put the, because my, one of my chicken died about a month ago. I lost one of my chickens. Um, what happened? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Don't know. Don't know. Um, mm -hmm. I could have found out because I had a camera there, but I didn't put the SD card in that one. Um, now the SD cards all on the outside, everything, there's SD cards everywhere. So if something mm -hmm. happens, my dad knows, A, shut everything down, shut down the power. We're going to, um, we're going to take all the SD cards and we're going to give it to the police or whatever, whatever, and get everything solved or whatever. So he knows that part, but I didn't have one in there. So she died. And all of a sudden I heard all of this commotion and I'm like, what's wrong with them now? Man, they really acting up. <laughs> <laughs> like french fries too they do <laughs> i know yeah. i haven't lost one yet thank god but i'm scared that's what i'm afraid of because you get you know they're your little friends like you get attached like you know my chickens are my and little friend and, and the thing about it is my wife's never had a pet before so she really got emotional like for three days she basically cried and i'm like wow i couldn't even go to work that monday because that's when the chicken passed away that Monday because she was saying things that was like, okay, she's unstable right now. Let me not go to work. So she, you know, she I played didn't games. want the chickens, but you see, you fall in love with them. They fall in love with yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. She started to hold them all that day. And the next day she went through her whole like um, gallery finding um, the chicken. videos of chickens and pictures. Yeah. Oh my goodness. She went ham with it. But um, that was, that was very, you know, some certain emotions I haven't seen from her. And that was mm -hmm. like, she, she said she's never lost anything that close to her. So, I was like, oh, wow. So it really like opened my eyes to, you know. That's good, though. Not good that you lost the chicken, but it's people don't understand yeah. the power of animals. They think it's just like, oh, whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's a dog, a cat, a chicken, a bird, like you would get attached to them and you, you, oops, I think he, I think he pressed the wrong button. You grieve them. So it's hard. Let me drop the link. I don't know if, if um it's still in the chat. I'll paste it again. That's why I'm, I'm I'm afraid to see. I don't. If I lose a chicken, I'm gonna be upset. But if I have to see it like attacked by an animal and left like feathers all over the place and missing things, that's gonna upset me even more. If it's just like laying there, I can deal with that, but not really. But if it's like um. Hold on, GT. I see, but it's loading. I don't see. Oh, there you are. Okay. Just I don't know. My Wi-Fi is a little slow. It's like I did. I could see a white screen. I didn't see you, but now I see you. But if I have to see the chicken attack and like you know a head over here, and I'll be like, nah, man. No. Mm. People have seen like the feathers everywhere, and you know I'm like, no, 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 no. I, I can't take that. That's gonna make me very upset. I'm gonna have to call someone to come and 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 go take the bury them. I can't do that part at all. Yeah. One lady I know, she lost her whole flock, her backyard, little, little, like six or seven, something raccoon came and just, and they don't even like eat them. Like they just kill them and leave. Oh, wow. Like what's the point? What's of that? <laughs> That's what makes me so mad. Like leave my birds alone. But it's devastating. I'm telling you. I lost a rabbit. Mm -hmm. I was upset. And But we had pets as children. So you'd be surprised that you're teaching your kids like these emotions and these things about life. Because some parents don't want their kids to have a pet because it's going to be their responsibility, which is kind of true. But it teaches them these things because otherwise they don't learn, you know, loss and and sometimes making a mistake, like feeding them the wrong thing that's toxic and you didn't know or, you, know, you, didn't, lock, or you didn't lock them up. No, because I remember as a kid at the, my aunt's farm, something happened and like, well, did you guys give them the right thing, the right measurement? Like, And we're like, like you know, trying to figure out the problem. It's like. Sometimes somebody puts in too much of this or too much of that. You don't know. Or yeah. you didn't lock the door properly and then you let the raccoon, like, did you, and you have to backtrack your, because your behavior has consequences. Well, you're trying yes. to rush back and go play, um, play with your video games or whatever you're doing. You didn't do your job properly. And then look what happened. So we learned a lot of yeah. lessons just from the farm, that farm life. So... Oh, and yeah, I, lost I really her dog, that. and so did um best yet journey. I don't have a dog, but yeah, entire flock hey. to the neighbor's dog. Oh lord! And I know Callie. We all know what happened with Callie Pooh Bear. Ooh. Her, some some random dog wasn't even like, like just some Ooh. dog from nowhere came in. Somebody else, I think even um, if you guys watch Faith Family Homestead, 
I think she lost a goat or something came to attack. And it wasn't her dog. It was another dog from somewhere else. And her dog mm. had to come and like fight the other dog. Some big thing happened. And I think they injured, mm. either they mm. injured or they killed one of And goats ain't cheap. You know goats ain't cheap. And mm. no, well, but no, they're not cheap. Like a chicken is like, you know, you can buy them again at, at, at the store. Getting a right. goat is not that simple, not that cheap. Hey, good morning, Jones Truth. And yeah, neighbors, dogs. And mm. um, I think somebody had a bear go on their property and rip the coop open. It's just, yeah, it's hard. You and, gotta make sure you, you just do all you can. And that's one of the things I actually am scared of because um, my wife, she was asking me, she before she was asking me, am I going to be able to protect the chickens from the bear? I said, no, how? <laughs> if they want it, they're going to go get it. And the people that have the electric fences or fence, I don't know the mm -hmm. plural, how to pronounce it or whatever, but they only have like the, the little flimsy, the little flimsy one, yeah. To work. The flimsy sticks, is that what you have to have? I was wondering that as well, but um, I, most people I see have the flimsy stick because they can move them around as they need them, and it keeps mm -hmm. like you know, raccoons, foxes, and stuff like you know, that out, maybe possums. But when it comes to like a bear, I think the bear will just take the shock and keep going, they're not gonna mm -hmm. stop. I think I dropped some tomatoes on the carpet by accident because I turned it the wrong way and they didn't. My god, I hope I didn't lose too many of them. Well, this is the white beauty, too, and the white beauty. Okay, let me put them in the right direction because they. The what? What'd you say that was? The white beauty beefsteak tomato. Let me see a picture. Oh, you did just talk No, about I don't have a picture. Let me see what it look like. Oh. It's from the library because I don't have a picture. I had to Google it when I um when I was there, but it looked okay. White. Hold on. I'll, I'll see if I can go my phone. I figured I'd try it because I know they only donate, are allowed to donate um, heirloom or open pollinated seeds. Mm -hmm. So, white beauty beef steak. Yeah, they got some pretty cool um, hybrids out there, though. I've seen some of them. Especially yeah, at pretty, Johnny. They, they almost look yellow. I don't know if you can see. They almost look yellow. Oh, okay, okay, okay. They're pretty big. Yeah, they're I got some. Big. Yeah, you, have, you probably have that. You have everything that's that's been ever created. Every seed that I know GT has them. But yeah, it looks like a light yellow, but it's white. That looks good though. That will be good for like a chutney or, or some kind of a white sauce, white tomato sauce. I'm trying to preserve more of my food this year. Like grow less different varieties, but preserve it. I didn't do a good job last year. I was just growing stuff and. I have stuff that's still not even put away properly. It's dry, but it's not even put away. Tea leaf. Like, it's just, it's a hot mess. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. And I want to do better because I, I can't, I can't live like this. I want it in proper jars, vacuum sealed. I want things either canned or whatever and put away and using them, not just having them there. It's just a waste of my time. Like, what is this? Oh, you, she got it from Baker Creek. Well, you already know GT's a VIP member of Baker Creek. So we don't worry. He'll, He'll find every seed between him and, and Mike Chaotic. Them team, them, them VIP at Baker Creek and my gardener. Then Ro you grow row gave some companies and they gone over there too for go buy seed. Then Mike gone on Menards for go buy seeds. <laughs> they have every every seed. He, they have every seed. They will never be short of varieties, I'm telling you. Um yeah, you would need a lot of voltage to, to bolt. A bear is not please. A bear will keep going, like, looking, like, really? Somebody said, I was watching a live about 2A, and they said that the person was climbing the tree, and then the bear was coming after them, and they fired on the bear in the head, made, you know, good hits, and the bear kept coming. Like, the bear didn't feel nothing. The bear didn't feel the, 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 um, the, the freedom seed in their head. Just kept going. So you think that little fence is going to stop the bear? You have to just know that the bear is not going to, Oh, like you're on mute, Mom GT. You're I was just mute. hoping that the I just was hoping that the the fence would shock them to where they're like, oh, that's hot. That's no. all I wanted to do. Nope. But <laughs> no. it will shock the other animals, and that will be like they'll be like, okay, I'm not gonna go further. The bear is like, whatever. That's like a tickle. I don't feel. I don't feel nothing. 
Um, <laughs> it may need to take a baby cauliflower outside. It's been two months old, so I find I don't know what you. Hey, Twin Beeson, did I did I see that right? Sorry, my eyes. Yeah, yo, yeah, Twin B song. I um, my cauliflower and stuff wasn't wasn't germinating very good. I had to get just plain white LED lights, and it's fine now. The the grow lights that came with the Mackenzie kit. When you see, if I, I'll do a video. When you see the top shelf, it's so much dimmer than the bottom lights that have LED. You can see the difference in brightness. My broccoli, my cauliflower would never germinate. I would throw the seed. I would throw the the seed trays outside. All of a sudden, they would germinate. Mm. The lights weren't giving them enough of what they needed. It wasn't the moisture. It wasn't the soil. The light. But all of my brassicas have, except for my Casper kale from Baker Creek, I don't know what's going on with that one because I'm using that brand new soil with the gnats. But they didn't. Um, oh, from Singapore. Okay, good to see you, um, Twin B Song. I didn't see any germination in that one, so I'm gonna have to drop some more seeds. And I have to harvest seeds because I don't have. I don't want to buy another pack from Maker Creek. It's not cheap. So I think it was like a five dollar pack. So you I'm said gonna, Casper um, kale. Yeah, Casper kale. Mine didn't germinate. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I know what you want. You're talking about. It's got the snow in the background. Yeah, yeah. yeah it has like a white and green, <laughs> like, you know, almost like a stripe, but not a stripe. I, yeah, so I like that. Making one. sure I grow the stuff that I have. So I can collect the, those seeds. All I have is the original pack from Baker Creek. So I don't know if there were one even viable. I'm sure they are. And I can't let them sit for five, 10 years. I got to grow them and then harvest some seeds because it's they're biannuals. That's going to be a whole two years before I get seeds. So, and I still have a plant at the back. Some one brassic, I don't even know what it is with seeds still in there. So I'm going to have to just cut it up and put it in the yard waste bag because I have I have too many volunteers that are going to pop up this year. I know I'm going to have pure volunteers of things I don't even know what it is. I I've had a kale. Things. Go ahead. Sorry. I've had a kale plant growing for over a year in my garage. It's huge. It's huge. So I'll, um, I'll be happy when it produces some seeds for me. Yeah. My, um, my dad took some kale cuttings and just put them in water and he got some roots. So now he's doing these kale plants from from the pieces of kale from the garden. Mm. Now he's now he's experimenting because he sees us doing all this stuff. So now he's mm -hmm. you know <laughs> almost laughing. He's like you can't do this, you can't do that. It's not gonna work. Now all of a sudden the man tried. I go yeah, watch me. <laughs> no, that's right. So they went on and YouTube oh. and they tell me mm. to do A, B, and C, and me to do A, B, and C, and C. And then it worked. Mm -hmm. So he's like, oh, oh. And I've been wondering, like, the spectrum of light that the hydroponic units actually provide, it's able to provide only on 36 watts. And some of them are like 24. And they're able to give you a mature plant. You're able actually mm -hmm. to grow peppers on in those units. But some of the shop lights that we buy, they're long. And they're supposed to be a certain spectrum of light and so much intensity. But it doesn't it doesn't give you the same, in my opinion, you know, no, it doesn't so. give you the same. But I <clears throat> the bought the light that I bought from the McKenzie. It was just like a kit, like a seed started kit with pods and a tray and a light. And it mm -hmm. came with like a flimsy light on a stand. But I had no lights at that point. So it was better than nothing because right, the, right. the little lamp wasn't doing diddly squat. And the window was not enough um, space because everyone's like, oh, their lamps, their, their, their plants are so lanky. I'm like, because you don't have a light. You can't get a nice, sturdy plant from a windowsill. There's only so much window you have. So I keep telling them to buy lights and not buying lights. So I bought the light that came with it. It's like a T5 or something. But it's not, it's bright-ish, but not bright. A regular LED light has given me more uh, positive results. Now, it's still a bit weird when it comes to hot peppers, the cannabis, the um, certain things kind of need a different kind of light. But I find the soil that I'm using now is much better. The hydroponic, I was not, even my kale didn't germinate in the hydroponics. I tried like three times for WIG, oh. didn't grow. Then I put bok choy in there. It germinated quickly. But then when it got to the true leaves, it started to like die off. 
So I don't know what's going on with the, but it doesn't like the sponge or doesn't like the the hydroponic. I don't know what's maybe going on. I, I, maybe it's a sponge because you guys be growing. You and um, Mike and G Mom are growing those things like nothing, no problem. So I'm like, okay, what's going on? I don't get it. And then I planted three um, Hattie Tim tomatoes in a seed pod, and I separated them now. Mm -hmm. Now they're flowering, and I shook, I vibrated them, so they they pollinated. So now I'm seeing little tomatoes growing. So I'm going to get. Tiny Tim tomatoes. So that is fine. But the water stuff is like up and down. And I think G Mama said like put peroxide in there because um the water maybe needs a little sanitation or something. Cause it's I'm seeing I'm seeing mold spores on the roots. But it's almost finished now. So I'm gonna just start fresh. Once the challenge is over, I'll I'll just start fresh. So I, I'm getting yeah, and, and also you can grab you can grow the other plant that you're talking about in the hydroponic mm -hmm. unit. I've you never can. tried that, so maybe I'll try it on this next one. I put them in peat pellets and done that, but I've never done it in the spot in the, the hydroponic. So I'll, I I'll give it a try. I'm, I'm at work, so but you you, you can't, can't say those words, um, yes. <laughs> um, and if you get a there's the photo period one and the auto. The auto I didn't like, but because mm -hmm. I tell it's all my business. Yeah. I bought them. Um, I haven't tried the autos because I don't, I don't, it, it's, you know, I just don't like autos, but I yeah. think that if you want precise timing, don't have to worry about lighting issue as far as time sensitive. I mean, like light sensitivity or whatever, yeah. then that's what you should get. And okay, yeah, you can, you can get it in there. I was. I had a problem germinating for a long time. And then when I came on YouTube and started, you know, my channel and asking around, that's the first time I got success with germination. And I think what was missing was a bit of heat. Sometimes it means a heat mat or something. And then I, I invested in two heat mats and it's, you know, it's not even very hot. It's just a little bit hot, but it's all you need. It's all you need mm -hmm. is that moisture and that, that temperature, consistent temperature. And I had to have no problem. They've, they've germinated. They weren't lanky. The light was enough. I think Jimama's saying that the lights from the units are angled downwards. I I mm. lift my trays up towards the light and I wrap my shelf with um reflective like mylar thingy to mm -hmm. make the light bounce on the shelf. I don't um mm. I don't um just have it on the shelf willy nilly. You have to reflect the light back into the shelf, otherwise. It's not going to get enough intensity. G Mama's saying that she prefers autos. I, she prefers autos. Is, I've never, I've never done the autos, but I, I, I like when when the earthquake happened for me. It changed my whole life, the way I see things and everything. So I started grabbing seeds that were, I felt like, um, were important. You know, so mm -hmm. I grabbed those. I grabbed the tobacco. I grabbed all of those things because it's like okay if you know things are crazy mm -hmm. because of my mind so let mm -hmm. me just give myself a little bit more security and rest my anxiety so that's why i mm -hmm. bought it but i've never grown an auto i've grown um other the other ones time sensitive uh, what is it called yeah. photo 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 photosynthesis i, I forgot mm -hmm. the name of it but you know what i'm talking about G Mama. but i got a quick question right quick um mm -hmm. to ask everyone now, see, this is what I want to cook for dinner tonight. I want to cook this with some other stuff, pork chops and stuff like that. And I got some other greens. But I've how never would cooked cook? artichoke in my life. Is that artichoke? Yeah, I've only boiled it. And then, you know, that's the only way that I know of. You cut the bottom, you split the thing or whatever. Then you sit it in there and then you cook it that way. Do mm -hmm. y'all know in the chat, do y'all know of any other ways to cook um, artichoke? If y'all can put it in the comment section and... Um, yeah, maybe, type it um, down because me never put that in my life. I want to cook it, but I was like, <laughs> you look at it, you're like, what do I do with that? Do I roast it? Like, you know. When I used to be a bachelor, I used to have a lot of this, a lot of um, the shellfish, um, not lobster, but the other one. I mm -hmm. used to have that one, and I used to have um, what else? Um, it was a just an abundance. I used to have crazy meals and stuff, so. Uh, and then I used to have this like fondue, I think it's called a fondue thing where you heat it up. And I used to have butter mm -hmm. in there. So I would take that um, shellfish 
and I would just be dipping in the same thing with the um, artichoke. I was living a good life then. <laughs> that was like what, sixteen years ago. Man, I got a child. I want to try those different vegetables. This is what I because <clears throat> we weren't exposed to those things. We cook the same thing, you know, that you're used to, but we never right. really tried anything different. So I was trying, you know, I started trying asparagus. I like asparagus. But it makes your urine stink, though. Is it just me, or is it like asparagus makes no. your pee stink? And it's still scary, even about? though I know. Eh? I don't know. No, I'm saying is it just? I think someone else said, yeah, it makes your, your it makes your pee, or it makes it stink, or it, it goes do. yellow, or. I'm like, damn, what the hell is that? You know. <laughs> uh, Tigsy saying roast it. Uh, so okay. I'm saying air fry it? Question mark. So I don't know she tried that. Um, okay. Okay, take care, Denise. We'll see you next time. Um, I don't know. You're going to have to... I like roasting and air frying because it's just... I don't know. I like the taste of roasted vegetables and stuff. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But... Yeah, I just took it out and I was going to research it. I'm like, man, let me ask Urban's audience real quick. I'm know. looking at what auto is. So auto is auto flowering. Okay. Yeah. Disadvantaging of, of you have lower level of the mm -mm, annoyed content, which can make them less appealing to growers who value high THC levels. <coughs> ding, oh, ding, ding, ding. That's why you don't like them. <laughs> Lastly, no. auto flowers are not clonable because the clone would reach its flowering stage simultaneously with its mother plant and have stunted growth. Okay, and that so was that the biggest right. reason why I didn't want it is because once you have one of those mothers that that you know is has good genetics as far as everything mm -hmm. that you look for in the plant, if you like the balance of uh, the T word and then um, CBD mm -hmm. and stuff like that, if you like that balance or whatever, and you get the correct seeds, then you can't. It's not clonable if you use auto flower, and that's why if you grow it, you take you keep the mother in the veg state and then you're able to you know clone and you can build you a cloner or buy you a cloner mm -hmm. and once you have the cloner you have abundance you i don't know what i have but i know my friend gave me two of his plants so i'm gonna have to mark those seeds separately do i have them no because what i harvested inside is is i can't tell which one is which i have some on a tray and i have one in a, in a bag and an air bag I can't tell which one is which now. Does it even matter? A lot of mercy. I have <laughs> my my breed, which I think is in the bag, and his is on the tray. Yeah, I think his is on the tray because I did that from lab. Okay. I don't think you can drop a link, Tigzy, unless you're a moderator, so it won't it won't post it if you drop links. Um, you have to put it on your community tab. Yeah, feminized can stay in veg as long as you don't change the light. See, yep. you guys are high. This is like this is like you and Howie talk because he's high tech and all. He's no, he knows. <laughs> Feminized plants require light time change to change. Um, while autoflowers will flower without light changes. Yep, twelve and twelve. Yeah, that's or less um, when it comes down to it. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I don't do none of that stuff. All I know is start the seed, put it outside, and then and then whatever, and then the flower, the um, the trees that the birds chew off all the seeds because I left it there too long. Now, what do I do with the with the dried stuff? Just make tea? Can I can I make can I use my air dried blossoms to make um, oil now? Oh, I don't my know. I've never dried, used it that way. My own. I've only air made dried... gummy bears. Sorry. Okay, I can make gummy bears with it now. No, I've I've used the flour to make um, gummy bears and for um, the other consumption. But I've Another consumption. I don't know what to do with. Well, like I dried a whole bunch. I don't know what to do with it. I really don't know. If it's seeding, it's a hermaphrodite. Yeah, mine mine seeded. So or that means a female. That means that it has both. I mean, that oh, can both. mean that it has both. But um, okay. the hermaphrodite that means um both. Both. I mean, I know what may have been. It's no say flower. I'm gonna get more seeds in it, and then the seeds that I harvested. Uh, gave me a plant again it germinated so it 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 did something so the ones that the guy gave me i don't know where he bought them. he bought them from some place and he had to get rid of them but he some special breed of them i don't know but they probably cross-pollinated now so I, I can't tell you i can't tell you 
All I know I mean, is a whole it, tray full of dried, a whole tray full of dried flowers. I don't know what to do with them. Or oh, I can use it for baked goods still. I just mix, I just crumple it up and 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 mix it with the baked good, the brownies. People make butter. Recipe. They make all kinds of stuff with that. Yeah, but I wasn't sure if I need the fresh flowers or the dried buds or the or the like. I have a whole bunch of dried buds. I have tons of dry buds. I took up my seeds that I want to keep already for the most part. So I wonder if I can just grind it up into a powder and then make, you know, put it in a cake mix and make a cake with it. I'll see if somebody has an online recipe and I'll look it up. I'll make some brownies. All right. Take care, Tigsy. See you later. Um, I'm going to end too because I, I got to go to get some more groceries. I went to the feed store this morning, got that taken care of. Got the girls taken care of. Um, the feaster was good, but I finally, they recommend, the guy was very helpful, don't get me wrong, but he likes to recommend me um, every time like parasite stuff for the girls. And I keep telling him, I use diatomaceous earth and I use chili flakes and I use herbs in their food. I don't really give them medication. Oh, I have to still decarb decarboxylate them. So I need to Do use it. the thing. Oh, okay. So I, if I buy that machine, that that machine you recommended, I, it'll do that part for me, and then I'll get the. Um, I did my. Sorry. No, go ahead. I don't know what I'm saying. I was just like saying there's some machine she said that you can make oil with. It, it does it for you. Decarboxylates it, and it does it. It infuses it into oil or or I don't know if it's water or liquor or whatever. So. I didn't do I just air dried it and I have them in containers. So I have a whole can, pile of stuff. And people are wondering mm -hmm. why I have so much weed. Why does this person have so much gunch in her kitchen? <laughs> well, you, you can use your oven to actually um carboxylate, decarboxylate. Yeah. You can use your and, oven. And I to grind do that. once I do that, then I grind it up and I put it in the recipe. It matters what you want to use it for. If you want to use I also Brownies. use my oh. I'm, I've never made brownies, only gummy bears. And I used um, coconut oil and um, what's the thing? It's right there. What's that thing called? Oh, man. What's that called? It's a pot. So, the thing, crock pot. Crock the pot. crock pot. I use, yeah, I use my so crock you, pot. To so make. when you make the gummy bears, you use like a, what agar agar, some kind of something, right? To make it stick together. You use like, what do you make it to the gummy? Isn't there something you got to put in there to make it a gummy? Jello. Oh, you use Jello, so then yeah. you use gelatin. You're using gelatin. You no, know, some people use, use like agar agar or something natural. They don't put um because I guess they're vegan and Jello has um cow something in there. Jello not, not vegan. I'm, that's why. Okay, you use use gelatin. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. So, I'm not on that. I I consume bad food. I consume. Yeah, so do I. But sometimes people say food. they don't want it in it. They call me <laughs> in the gummy beer. They want the gummy italics. <laughs> they want it like plant based, so they're they're and sometimes the gelatin's made from pork, so people don't you know Rastaman don't want no pork, so they don't want that in there. So I see them online making it with like a certain ingredient to make it jelly like, but that's probably why because I think gelatin's either made from pork or made from I think it's from pork, you know. Yes. And I said I don't eat pork no more, but I think I'm still eating pork if I'm eating if I'm eating gummy bears. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I don't it, it might say natural. I don't know. It I will smoke the just... house in the oven. Okay. So you bake, you bake, you whatever, you decarboxylate, whatever it's called, the, mm -hmm. the, the herb. And to make mm -hmm. your gummies, you just leave it in its whole form and put it what in the coconut oil in the crock pot? Or you grind yes, it up? It's, it's a recipe. It's a recipe. Mm -hmm. I followed the recipe. I actually screenshot the whole video. It was about 12 minutes long. I looked it up. I can actually email it to you. Email, yeah, email and, it to me, please. And it would show you exactly how he did it. And but he, he has a few videos that would actually be essential if that's the method that you want to take. Um, okay, because I'm gonna, in, inhalation I is use not the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you, and anybody else that's listening, when you make these, these are they're they're, you can make them really strong. I, I I can't do it. It was one and done. This was like four years ago. I will never mm -hmm. do it again. It's way 
my tolerance is like this. <laughs> yeah, I don't so, want to be was, bouncing off. I want to just be a little it's just a slow, you know. I want more to make so, ointments for for joint pain. So if somebody has a, a recipe for joint pain cream or something, send me that email. I will look at it because um I want the um I wonder if Tixie knows I'm in Canada. Just send me that that um I'll tell her anyways. Just send it to regular mail. Don't send it no fancy mail. Um, pec oh, that's it. Pectin or agar agar is substitute for jello. Okay, that's what I see people using because I know say them quote unquote ital. So um, mm. but yeah, if someone has a recipe, a dream mom or whoever, email me like uh how they make like the, the joint cream or like the salve. Um that's more what I'm interested in. People who have arthritis pain or like you know, bone, whatever, stuff like that, muscle pain. Um let me see how to do some of those because I have all this stuff here and I want to make sure I have the, the product that I need um, to help people with their joint, their muscle pain, their joint pain, knee pain, elbow pain. Um, that's kind of my main, or even a brownies, like just to have a soft, low, mellow, not like knocking people out for four days and they can't, you know, wake up. We don't want none of that. Just something mild and just, you know relax the vibes because <laughs> I don't want to be responsible for that. So let me know, you know, and I'm going to email Tigsy, but that's pretty much it for me. It's uh, almost one o'clock. I'm going to go get my groceries. Yeah. I don't want to be on the floor and knock out to say uh, out of body experience. We don't need none of that. <laughs> over here. I'm um. so yeah, make sure that 25th is next. It's not too far away, like seven to eight days away. So that's the next update for the, Herb Garden Challenge, the WIG. People are going to be probably putting up videos soon because the month is almost coming to an end. So make sure you check out those videos. And um, I think G Mama, yeah, G Mama had a premiere this week. So check out her video. GT had a video this week about the fig cutting. So if you want to do fig cutting, definitely watch that video. I'm going to be doing mine this weekend. Um, and my figs are doing, doing pretty, like they're blossoming out and doing great. And I will do a video on the soil that I use and why, you know, it didn't work. Oh, hey, African, why it didn't work out for indoors. And just to be careful of the ingredients when doing indoor gardening, if you want to avoid gnats, because I think we all have PTSD from gnats in the house. It, it's, it's not cute. So take care. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. I'll see you next week. Thanks for tapping in as usual, guys. I appreciate you all. And peace and love. Take care.